have the 131 cutaway here and the parts that have changed specific to the 135 what's going to make the 135 different than the 131. about what we've done on the 135 compared to the 131 is it's a four cubic inch displacement. Can't be too mad at that. I mean, <laughs> you're like, here's a taste. We are next to the tent. <laughs> <laughs> That's achieved all on stroke. So we are launching the first four and five eighths inch stroke crankshaft for the Milwaukee engine. It maintains the same 4.310. Oh. It's a four cubic inch displacement, roughly 3%, which on normal engine performance, if you maintain similar performance, you have a 3% increase in displacement, you're gonna have a 3% increase in power. But we've been able to deliver approximately a 10% increase, both in power and torque in a street legal package available to the consumer. So if we go through part by part, a little bit what's changed. Right here we have a new 68 millimeter throttle body. So when we launched the 131, we came out with a 64 millimeter throttle body. This is a 68 millimeter throttle body. So it's opened up a little bit more. This was actually developed with the race team and it is the throttle body that we ran all of 2022 on the race bike. 68 millimeters was chosen specifically for its flow characteristics for the large V-twin engine. We tried different size throttle body, some larger, some slightly smaller than 68. And this is really the perfect characteristic that we have for this motor that feeds the performance that we need in a smooth linear fashion through the engine. Um, we've actually tried bigger throttle bodies and cut the engine performance down, hmm. including on the race engine. So when we talk about 135 performance, it's the same on the, the 131 inch race engine, which is obviously making a lot more power and torque than, than the base motor. It's made it to a CNC ported 68 millimeter throttle body. Um, we had a 64 millimeter throttle body launched with the 131. We offered a CNC version of that. This crate motor is going to come with the CNC version. So it's been fully optimized for flow characteristics through and you get the best right off the bat with the crate. This is the same manifold in production form that we ran at Atlanta last year in 2022. It's the manifold that won the race at Road Atlanta, Kyle won it. So it's pretty cool that we directly were able to develop something for the racetrack and now offer it for customers. When we developed the 5 8 inch stroke, we were able to keep rod length the same, simplify the manufacturing process and things at PTO. But in order to do that, we had to change the pin height within the, the piston itself. That compressed the amount of available space for the rings. And one of the things that we learned through racing was how to maintain a really good ring seal on the bore, especially a large bore that's only held with four head nuts and has a lot of distortion and heat distortion on an air cooled motor. It gets hot. So you can see that there's gas porting here on the top ring. And that allowed us to go from a 1.5 mil, both of the rings, top ring and, and middle ring, and go to a one millimeter thick ring with gas porting to provide the seal that we still need for the performance characteristics, get that 10% gain and maintain full emissions compliance. In 2021, we launched the Screaming Eagle cam plate. So this is a CNC cam plate oil pump enhanced scavenging cap capacity for the engine that is available today as a Screaming Eagle part, but with our premium crate engine, that's gonna come standard in the crate engine now. So you won't have the factory cam plate and oil pump, but you'll have the Screaming Eagle billet version included in your street legal race expired <laughs> 135 cubic inch engine. Another change, kind of subtle, we don't have parts up here, but we changed injector targeting. The injectors did increase to 5.5 grams per second. The injectors increased targeting was modified to make sure that it was fully optimized. That's another way we could get more power, lessons learned, injector targeting over the race program, uh, very clean burn, maintain emissions compliant. They're dual spray injectors, so there's two spray patterns associated with them. And the targeting is the biggest thing that we, we noticed. Um, going to a larger injector could still make the same amount of power, but now you're just using less of the injector capacity. So 5.5 was the right size for us. It still maintains a little bit if you built a race engine out of it, you could, you could get more out of the injector. Awesome. Great engine, fully assembled by the factory at our powertrain operations facility, fully inspected, fully checked, and it's a very easy change.
All right, guys. So unfortunately at the track, um, we did get pulled away from checking out that engine and getting more specs and whatnot on it because Kyle Wyman and Travis Wyman, they had their bikes basically being tested. Uh, they were taking them out on the track. You guys uh, be sure to check out that video as well. Should be on the next couple days. Here in the Blockhead Garage, uh, we are very focused on performance. We've got uh, 143 Milwaukee 8 here. We've got a SNS Twin Cam 124 on this one. Both of these performance baggers. What are you working on here? Uh, 128. 128. Yep. Stage four. So we got a dyno room in here. I'll let you guys take a peek in here real quick. I don't want to disturb Chris too much because once he gets in that zone of tuning, Gotta kind of let him be. So he's tuning for those really low RPMs right now, trying to hit those cells. Be in there for, I don't know, hour or so. Basically tuning through the bike and it'll sound amazing when it's done. Since it is kind of loud out here, let's go ahead and we'll go into the office and Justin and I will talk about. Come in here where it's a little bit quieter. Justin and I will talk about the 135. Let's go. Also, Zuko. So Harley Davidson did send me a press release on the information of the uh, 135. What do you think about uh, Harley Davidson screaming equal the mile with this 135 kit? I mean, I think it's pretty badass. It's always just getting bigger and bigger now. So there's so much like performance happening with Harley that's like pretty awesome. Ain't no replacement for displacement. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's a good one. That's a good one. All right, so we do have some B-roll. So I'm gonna go ahead and read off some of this stuff and let you guys check out some of the B-roll of the uh, of the engine that they sent over to us. Chuko, damn, why are you all up in my face, bro? All right, so we're gonna throw up the Dynograph there for you. I know we're used to seeing these a little bit wider, but uh, this is kind of what they sent over to us in this press thing. The 135 cubic inch stage four performance crate engine, it is being offered as a crate engine. The Milwaukee 8 for 21 and later touring models. They're calling it the new benchmark for the factory engineered American V-Twin. Most displacement and most power ever created by Harley Davidson for a street compliant crate engine. The engine delivers 143 pound foot of rear wheel torque at 3,500 RPM and 130 rear wheel horsepower at 5,500 RPM. So that's 28% more torque and 41% more horsepower at the rear wheel than a production Milwaukee 8117 engine. So as uh, Jason Kale was saying in the video there, but just to kind of reiterate some of the stuff that they're uh, adding to it. So we've got a new 68 millimeter throttle body and matching CNC machined intake manifold, new CNC ported cylinder heads, a billet cam plate and oil pump, high compression forged pistons, Screaming Eagle 517 high lift cam with high performance cam bearing and high performance tappets, 4.31 inch steel sleeve cylinders, and a new four and five eighths inch flywheel. Also new high capacity 6.2 gram second fuel injectors and the Screaming Eagle ventilator intake and Screaming Eagle street cannon mufflers. Not required, but highly recommended for peak performance. So the 135 cubic inch stage four crate engine is intended for bolt-in installation in an original equipment style 21 liter Harley Davidson touring chassis. No special fabrication or engine mount relocation is required. The engine is backed up by a two year manufacturer's warranty and it has an MSRP of $79.99. 95 so eight thousand dollars and it's offered in a black or chrome finish all right guys so there you have it that's all the information on uh harley davidson 135 cubic inch crate engine from screaming eagle we are very performance oriented here at blockhead garage so if you guys are interested in getting anything done hit us up blockheadgarage.com fill out the form and send you to our website put you in touch with justin here and uh, he'll get you guys set up with service uh, I am personally currently running a 131 cubic inch Milwaukee 8 uh, with an SNS 590 cam, roller rockers, guardian kit, cam plate, oil pump. I beat the absolute shit out of that bike and had zero issues with it. The only issues that I've had, burning out O2 sensors, <laughs> which is kind of expected especially whenever we throw race gas at it. Those narrowband O2 sensors are really just not meant for it. But uh, yeah, we're definitely gonna be getting our hands on this 135 uh, cubic inch crate engine from Harley Davidson. Um, nothing 100% confirmed yet with Harley, uh, but I have been talking with him about it. Whenever we do get it, we will put it through its paces. But I'm sure a lot of you guys are gonna be getting it. And uh, based on how the 131 has performed, I'm sure it's gonna be a great engine. Other engine manufacturers that we've spoken to about the Milwaukee 8, about the 131 as well. They've uh, definitely given a lot of praise to the design of it. Great engine, lots of room for growth as well. And then also consider the fact that mm, Harley probably doesn't want me telling you guys this, but also consider the fact that that horsepower and torque number that they're giving you guys is with their tuner. And if you guys end up getting this, I mean, we're a custom speed shop, so we're not using like 
street legal tuners. So that engine's got more in it, I can guarantee you. We'll keep you guys posted what we hear, if and when we get it, and yeah, we'll see what we can do. Additional thoughts in closing. Justin just like, give me the footage so we can get this video yeah. out. The day that you guys are seeing this, um, I'm recording it the day before, and we've got all this information together. So big shout out to Justin, Iron J Moto. You guys go give him a follow at Iron J Moto for uh, absolutely crushing the edits here and uh, keeping us going on YouTube. Hope you guys enjoyed this one though. If you did, do me a favor, drop a comment down below. Let us know y'all's thoughts. If you guys did enjoy it, hit the like button. Let's YouTube know that we're doing a good job. Zuko, did you enjoy this one? Did you? Come on, get up here. Sit down. Shit your butt. Good job, like a human. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys aren't subscribed, you want to see uh, more motorcycle content and all that, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon so it sends you notifications, future uploads and activity. Be part of the Bell Yeah Squad. Do the ding thing. And uh, till next time, ride safe, stay vigilant. Catch you guys in the next one. Bye. Peace. Peace. Oh my God. <laughs>